Well, hello, ladies. It is April, Tuesday, 18th. I am Stella. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Excited to share this message for you. I, I cannot wait, you guys. This is, it has been a, a, a week of just, man, lots of shaking it off, lots of doing this whole thing, right? Just dust it off, dust it off, lots of things like that. And we're going to talk about um, that, 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 that word, that action, right? Of just shake it off. Whatever you're going through right now in, in the season in your life, you got to shake it off, right? It's going to take, um, uh, it's going to take consistency. It's going to take just a boldness. It's going to take a lion of, inside of you, right? But God is going to do that for you today. And at the end of this message, I want you guys to leave this message feeling empowered, feeling ready to run, right? I was talking to one of our sisters this morning, going through some things, right? And that's the same thing with her. Like she got off the call. She's like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to run, right? That's what we want. We, we, we need that. Um, we need the word of God. We need to know how to live the word of God. And this is what you're going to hear today. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let me open up with prayer. Father God, I thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, I thank you, Father, for your presence on this call. Holy Spirit, we invite you in. We ask you to take over, take over the word. Lord, you just take over the platform. This is all you, it's not me. I pray, God, that I decrease so that you increase, Lord. I pray, God, that it's your words and not my own. I pray, Jesus, that it's your truth, Lord God, your, your words spoken and not my opinions, not my thoughts, God. Take over, Lord. And I just come against anything, Lord, that would try to hinder your message from being spoken. Jesus, I just pray for an anointing right now in my vocals. I pray, God, that you would just take over, God. Give me strength, Lord God, to speak. Lord, I love you, Jesus. We praise you. We love you, God. We just, we honor you, Lord. I pray that you would touch hearts with this message today, Lord. That there is no condemnation in you, in you, Jesus. There's no condemnation in Christ, but God, that you are the God of loving conviction. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. Talk to us today, Lord. Your servants are listening. And it's in your mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Let every ear um, hear, right? Let every ear hear the word of God. So um, we're going to go ahead and go into this. I'm going to read the scripture to you. So we're going to start in um, the scripture. Actually, we're gonna... okay, we're talking about Paul on the island of Malta. Okay. It's Paul on the island of Malta. Um, I didn't write the reference. Okay. Uh, so it, it starts here. Once we were safe on shore, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. The people on, of the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful, armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging, <coughs> excuse me, hanging from his hand. <coughs> here we go. No. And they said to each, each other, a murderer. <laughs> I'm going to have to pause. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. In Jesus' name, Lord God, use me, Lord. A murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. But Paul shook off the snake. Say, shake off. Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. The people waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw that he wasn't harmed, they changed their minds and decided he was a god. Lowercase g, right? Near the shore where we landed was an estate belonging to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us and treated us kindly for three days. As it happened, Publius's father was ill with, very, with fever and dysentery. Paul went in and prayed for him, and laying his hands on him, he healed him. Then all the other sick people on the island came and were healed. As a result, we were showered with honors. When the time came to sail, people supplied, with us, supplied us with everything we would need for the trip. Oh, my goodness. Does that, this, did that just say so much to you right there? With whatever you're dealing with right there, look at that. There's people who, who, um, who will just call you out on, on different things, right? It was, let me get that because I didn't write that book. I don't know which, which, which book this was. Let me type it in. Okay. Can you use that reference right now? Yeah, it's an Acts. So Acts 28. Acts 28, starting there. Thank you for asking. 
Amen. Okay, so let's talk about this. Talk about the storms, okay? The storms. Um, Paul is on his journey. He's in his destiny, right? He's on his way to Rome to be tried, and he ends up in a storm and it gets shipwrecked on Malta. Okay, so storms come in in our life, right? Because the the world is fallen, right? There's so like I talked to so many people this week, right? Oh, I'm going through a storm. I'm in the storm, right? Storms come, and they don't be, they don't come because God is angry at people right? Things happen in life. <clears throat> we cannot blame God for, for all the bad things that happen in our life, the bad things that happen to good people. We live in a fallen world, right? We're in, we're in the world of the enemy, right? We live in a fallen world. So we can't blame God for, you know, the, the, the cancer, the death of a loved one. You know, there's two, there's two kingdoms represented in, in this world that we're living in right now, right? We have the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Right now, you guys can see there is so much darkness, that like, I mean, even the things that the, the laws that they're passing or the bills that they're passing, it's just, it, you, you got to know what's being spoken in your city, right? And um, there's just so many things that, that are being open that's in the kingdom of darkness, right? So you cannot allow the bad news to shake your faith, right? You can't allow that bad news to shake your faith from God. In the middle of the storm, Paul, who was called by God, saved everyone on the boat from perishing, Right? Moses, Daniel, Samson, Joseph, all saved a nation because they didn't let the storm define the outcome of their lives. We cannot let these storms in our life define us, define the outcome of our lives, right? So one person can save a multitude of people from harm. How do you know that God chose to save you first, right? That he did not ch uh, choose to save you first to be saved, to help save others, right? God chose you. You're like, but why me? Why me? But why not you? God chose you. He, he looked at you and said, you're the one. You're the one who's going to break generational curses for your family. You're the one that's going to do it. But why would you choose me of all people? Because you're the one who's willing. Come on. God is going to use you if you're willing, right? He doesn't need you perfect. He needs you willing. <clears throat> so, so the storm comes and it brings a, a, it brings a conclusion, which is shipwrecked on an island, Okay. The Bible describes it as the boat being caught in the middle of two seas, okay, which is a picture of transition, right? The boat was being caught in the middle of two seas. The transitions in life are usually unseen and, and unforeseen. <clears throat> they are violent, hurtful, and, and painful. Who knows that? Who knows that just as you're getting ready to transition into a new position, into a new location, into a new promotion. That's when all of the storm arises up. That's when that tornado comes into place, right? That's when the hurricanes come into place. So many things come into place. Can you guys hear me? Are we good? Is my computer's acting weird? Hopefully you can. Oh, I must have froze. Did I freeze? Are we good? Okay, thank you. Um, like, see, look at this. The enemy is not happy about this message. He's coming after it, right? That's right. Shake off the enemy, ladies, right? So when you're in a transition, right, it would be great if all of these transitions in our lives were so easy. Wonderful. I'm going to get the promotion. Awesome. It's going to be great. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that. It's going to be great, right? It would be wonderful if it was that way, right? But we have, there is a war for your soul. There is a war for your time, right? There's a war that's coming after your purpose, right? So no matter how you got here today, wherever you're at in your life right now, we're glad that you're here. No matter how rough it was last year, we're glad that you guys are here right now, that you're living right now, that you're doing what God has called you to do right now, right? You made it. It might've been horrible in that last season, but look at where you're at today, right? So the storm might have been that whole time in your past but look now look at what god is going to do because you're about to be transitioned you're, you're going to be transitioned into the next level of what god has for you right so it was rough the storm the waves were crazy they're trying to take you under you felt like you were drowning you felt like you were being stifled right you're being torn and being and tossed around and in the waves right but look at god is about to transition you into a new place a new a new season right so i want you to say God is transitioning me. God is transitioning me. Come on. He is transitioning to you. Okay. So successful people are not successful because they had no setbacks. You guys, 
people many times will look at somebody that's living in their promised land right now. They're like, wow, look at how great everything is going for them. Wow, I wish I can have that. But you didn't see their their process, right? So people look at your promise and they're like, oh, look at that promise that you're living in. But they didn't see the process it took to get there, right? So many people, many, many times people want the promise right now, but they're not willing to go through the process. There's a lot that goes behind the scene that goes behind the scenes, right? There is a lot of failure that happens when you're trying to succeed. But as long as you fail forward and not backwards, come on. So success is made possible because of all the setbacks. Successful people become uh, overcome the failure and shake it off. Were the failures there? Were the setbacks there? Were things trying to pull them away from their, their purpose, their destiny, right? The goodness. Yeah, but you, they shook it off. That's how you overcome. You shake it off. You say, oh, am, am I still freezing? You say, you say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give it any attention. Am I freezing you guys? Should I go to my phone? You're okay. good. I'm good. Okay. So you cannot let last year's storm dominate this year's attitude. Can we say that again? You cannot let last year's storm dictate this year or dominate this year's attitude. You can't take your past into your present and you can't take your past into your future, right? You got to move forward. You got to say, yes, that was me. Yes, I went through that, right? And you can look back only to see how far you've come, but you can't stay back there, right? You can't stay back there. Sorry. Okay. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Um, so you, 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 you cannot sit in your past or you'll never move out. You'll never move to the forward. Remember, remember to move to the front, right? Last year, last week, last night, right? Those are in the past. God will not allow one bad season to affect the rest, right? We, we can't control other people. We can't control their responses. We can't control their actions, but we can control our own, right? We can control how we respond. So um, in Romans 8, 28, right? And we know that all things work together for good to, the, to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, right? All things work, to, work together for God's good and for his glory, right? All those things, right, who are called, that are called according to his purpose. God has a purpose for you, right? So Paul was shipwrecked in the rough storm. It was already bad, right? Oh my gosh, here we go again, right? And now he's trying to get warm by the fire. He's in a foreign place. He doesn't know anybody. Anybody be in that position, right? Well, you know, like, man, I don't know anybody here, right? So you're immediately, you're worried, um, but you're, he's trying to get warm by the fire. He builds the fire and a snake bites him. How many have you, have you tried building and a snake comes and bites you, right? How many of us have, have befriended people who were snakes in our lives? Oh, how many have we befriended in our lives that have been snakes, right? And then they bit us, right? And we, but we knew they were a snake when we befriended them. How many, anybody have anybody like that in your life? Like, well, I should have known better. God told me not to be with this person. God told me to be, to be aware of this person. But yet here I am befriending them because I feel bad. I feel bad. So I want to make sure that, that they, that I'm their friend. Cause if they don't, if they're not friends with me, they're never going to be saved. Right. I'm going to be the only Jesus that they're going to have lies of the enemy, lies of the enemy. Right. So <clears throat> the snake bites him, right? So talk about a bad day when it rains, it pours. You guys do, deal with that? When you feel, you feel like, man, it's been going bad, but now it's getting worse. Wow, could it get any worse than this, right? And it just keeps piling on and piling on, right? So now out of all the unbelievers, right? Um, these are idol worshipers and prisoners. Um, why him, right? Now out of all the unbelievers, why, why him, right? Religious doctrine says God punishes the sinner right? But why a godly man? Why you? Why someone in the middle of God's will? Why am I getting attacked, God, when I'm the one who, who does all this for you? And why are they not getting attacked? It's because the enemy doesn't mess with people that aren't a threat to him. The enemy's not worried about the people that, um, that are not following him. He already has them. He's not worried about that. He's like, oh, they're, they're already there. I got those. Those are easy. He wants the ones who are a threat to him. He wants the ones who are aren't just going, I'm talking about the ones who are not just going to church, but they're living church. Okay. They're living it in their lives. They're not two double-minded people being one person at church and being one person at, at home. Okay. He's talking about the ones who are living for him, 
right? So the serpent doesn't go for people who aren't burning for him. Come on. The serpent does not go for people who aren't burning for him. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But if you are going to light a fire for God and burn for him, you will awaken a serpent that will try to destroy you right out of the, out of the fire that you are feeding. Come on, Jesus. Goodness. Thank you, Lord. There has to be a fire in you. There has to be a fire so bright in you that, that um, the enemy is so threatened, right? He's so threatened, right? That that serpent's going to wake up. He's going to wake up and be like, oh, I'm going to try to get this person, right? Let me try to attack them right where it hurts, right? Let me tell you this. Um, as I was ministering to my sister this morning, right? There is, um, the enemy knows your triggers, the enemy knows what you're, what you get mad about. He know he knows what, what bothers you. He knows what triggers you because you say it out loud. He can't read your mind. He's not omnipresent. Can't be everywhere. He's not omni, but he has a, an army, but they just can't read your mind. Right. But they know what you're, what you're, what you're uh, going to do. Cause you've already done it. They know what makes you mad. They know that you, they're going to use this person to, to say this to you and you're going to get upset and you're going to react. And that's what, and then he wins. Right. He's going to bring people back into your life that have not been here, but all of a sudden they show up. All of a sudden, they're back in your life, right? So um, keep that fire burning, ladies. Keep that fire, right? If you're a woman of God, you're like, Jesus lives in me, right? Keep it burning. Because if you let it go out, you're going to be hit by a fence. You're going to be hit by um, all these things, you know, uh, feeling like you're being judged, feeling like you're being attacked, feeling like, oh, the world just coming after me. Oh, they don't know, right? You're going to start feeling and you're going to start living in your flesh, as opposed to living, you know, in the spirit, right? So it's okay because the enemy cannot defeat you unless you believe he can. So if you believe the enemy will defeat you, then he will. But if you believe that God is who he says he is, that he is the king of kings, he is the redeemer, he is the healer, he is the restorer, right? That he has refined you, he has pruned you, he has put you into this place for such a time as this to defeat, right? to defeat the dragon, come on, to defeat the serpent, right? If you know that God is using you, imperfect as we are, if you believe that, the enemy can't mess with you, right? If you start believing the words of the enemy, like, oh, I'm sick, I guess I'll just be sick again, I guess I'll, I'll be paycheck to paycheck, I guess I'll just be poor again, I guess I'm not gonna ever gonna, never gonna get out of this, this is how it's gonna be, right? If you believe that, you're partnering with the enemy. So you have to speak the life, life-giving words. And believe that God is who he says he is, right? So God can't bless it until you stop cursing it. God can't bless it until you stop cursing it, right? You might have you might have said like, yep, well, I might have said this, right? It's always happening to me. It's generational, right? But whose report will you believe? Who are you listening to? Who told you that? Who said that? I want you to say that out loud. Who said that? Who told you that? Right? So what God said to Adam and Eve in the, in the garden, who told you that? God said, where are you, Adam and Eve? Do you think God didn't know where they were? He wanted to know spiritually, where are you? Oh, man. Right? He sees you. Where are you spiritually? So the poison has no power over you unless it has permission from you. Can we say that again? The poison of the, the snake has no power over you unless it has permission from you. When he shook that snake off, it didn't do anything. It didn't, it, it might have penetrated him, but it did not go in him because he didn't believe that there was power in that snake. He didn't believe that there was power in that venom. You got to take the power away from the enemy. You got to say, get out of here now in Jesus name. I rebuke you serpent, right? There is no power in your camp. You're not going to make me sick in Jesus name. You're not going to take my marriage in Jesus name. Come on. You're not going to take my family in Jesus name. I come against you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out. Get out in Jesus name out, right? It has no power unless you give it permission in the spiritual realm. The enemy cannot mess with you unless you have given permission to the enemy. Come on in. I guess that's how it's going to be permission. Horror movies in your house permission. You're opening a door. Let's just be real. You can get, you can get Christianese all you want, but you're opening a door which is all of a sudden, we knew this. We, we went through this. We lived this, okay? We watched all the paranormals. We watched horror movies. I didn't even like horror movies, but we watched them, right? And we would have all kinds of crazy spiritual stuff happening in our house. And finally, God told us, stop opening the doors. Shut them out. 
door closed. Can't come in my house, right? Take authority, right? Take authority over your house. They cannot come at you unless you give it permission, right? So you start speaking the poison into yourself by, by, by what you're saying, right? It was a bite, but only you can believe it has poison. Do you believe, let's talk about, let's just get real. There was a, vi a virus going around, right? There's been many times. It wasn't just this last 2020, okay? But there was a virus going around. There's been many viruses going around. There's been lots of viruses going around, okay? Um, any, you, you, there are so many things that were that people were, were passing away from, right? And and what we were giving so much power, we gave so much power to that word, to the C word, right? We gave so much power, more power than before of, of any virus, it seems to me. Um, but we gave so much power to it that we believed that that, that virus was the killer. The virus wasn't the killer. It was the enemy. Okay. The enemy, the, the virus was the tool. The virus was the tool that the enemy used to create fear, to create weakness. Come on and try to water down the word of God because it does not align with the word of God. God says, I'm a healer. And God took every stripe on his back for you. So if he says that he's a healer, then we don't believe the diagnosis that we're sick because that's not what my God says. But if we only believe a portion of his word, are we believing him? Come on, can somebody say amen? We don't need to believe a portion of God's word. We need to believe God's word entirely. God, you said that by your stripes, I am healed, right? You said, I am healed. I am delivered the blood of Jesus over me and in me and through me is my healing, is, is my healing ailment, right? is my uh, ointment, right? That's what I need. That's all I need. Come on. That's all you need, right? Take away all the, you want to talk about um, poisons, right? There's also poisons in foods and what we're eating. That's why you got to pray over your food, sisters. You got to pray over your food. You can't be just th throwing that food in there and you got to pray over it, right? Lord, like clear it, clean it up, Lord God, right? Thank you, Jesus. Luke 10, 19. This, I give you the authority. Jesus gives you the authority to trample over snakes and scorpions. The authority, you have the authority. The enemy doesn't believe that you believe that you know that, right? 10, 19, sorry. That you, he doesn't think that you believe that. He's like, eh, right? That's why he won't, he doesn't care if you're a Bible, Bible carrying person in a suit, Bible carrying person in a dress and you like you do all the things that you're supposed to do right for the church right but you're he doesn't he, he just he's worried about when you live it right he's worried about when you live it so people don't know their authority that's why the enemy can come and scare you in your own house oh come on that's why the enemy can can threaten you in your own house that's why the enemy can threaten you in your doctor's visit right nope I have the authority of Jesus the authority of Jesus Christ in me that tells me I am healed. So when somebody says, you're sick. No, I'm not. I'm healed in Jesus name. But you are showcasing symptoms. Yeah, symptoms. Whatever, but I'm not sick. I don't claim that because I'm healed. It doesn't line up with my, what my God says, right? Oh, you're dumb. You don't know anything. That's not what God says. He doesn't say that about me. He says, I'm chosen. He says, I'm royalty. He says, I'm called, right? He used Moses right? Come on. He used Saul, right? He used Saul who persecuted Christians. He's going to use you. Come on. So Paul is bitten and it's a setup. So when you're under attack, there is always an unusual audience. Who knows that? Oh my gosh. Who knows that there is an audience at your break, at, at your, at your fallback, right? The, your setback, there is an audience unusually. All of a sudden everybody's looking. Everybody's like, uh, they're alert. What's happening? Drama? What's happening? Right? immediate response to pain or crisis is to focus on the problem or the area of pain but we need to understand that we always have an audience somebody is always watching they're watching how you're going to respond they're watching what's going to happen next right there's people on your social media that are watching your next setback excuse me they're watching your next setback they're waiting for you to fall back right they want to see what you're going to do so the storm and attack is never about what is happening to you, but rather who is watching you. Response and reaction is what the enemy wants. Oh my goodness. Paul is spiritually mature enough to realize what's happening. So he seizes them with opportunity. Come on. There's a lot of Christians. I said this today. 
when I was ministering, you know, um, there's people don't, they, they say, oh, you're a Christian, then you should be doing this. And, or Christians don't do this and Christians do this. But the, the term Christians have been watered down so much, right? Because people, um, they, they do the Christian thing that they speak Christianese, they speak the language, they go to church, they do all the things that they're supposed to do, right? They're earning part that they think they have to do, but they're not living the word of God. So they don't get the, the maturity level. There's a lot of immature Christians, right? Who are trying to lead or trying to speak the word of God. And they're in, they're immature. They're, they're drinking the formula. They're not drinking the real food yet, right? They're not eating the real food yet. So they're still immature. But he says, Paul was spiritually mature enough to realize when you are spiritually mature, it means that you're going to be silent, that you're not going to respond right away. That you're not going to come at somebody right away. You're not going to confront them right away. You're going to sit in the spirit and you're going to say, Lord, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? How do I respond to this? Because your flesh wants to do all kinds of stuff for you. Your flesh already has your earrings off. Your flesh already has like your hair back in a ponytail ready to go, right? And Holy Spirit's like, sit. There's a right way to do it. For we do not battle against flesh and bone, right? We battle against the principalities of darkness. Come on. You got to battle in the spirit. You have to understand the same fire that you are creating. The same fire that drew out the enemy is the same fire that has the power to destroy the enemy. You guys know that song? The same power, the same power. Come on. It is the same power, right? It will destroy the enemy. Come on. So don't stop doing what you're doing just because you're, you're, you became under assault. You got to shake it off, right? You're like, man, I've been, I've been running for God. Why is this all happening to me? I want to quit. I want to leave church. I want to leave. And I don't want to talk to anybody else. I don't trust anybody else. Why do you think that happens? The enemy's like, yes. All I had to do was say this thing, do this thing, get this thing in front of them. Got him, right? You got to shake it off. You got to shake it off. There is a power in you. There is a power in you that God is going to, he wants to ignite it. He doesn't want to take you out. God's, God's plan for you is never to take you out of the church. God's plan for you is never to take you away from the kingdom army. God's plan for you is to rise up through adversity, right? Many people want to fall in adversity. They want to fall back and say, I guess I better leave everything because it's not working out the way I planned it to work. Rise up. Rise up. Come on, rise up in Jesus' name. I want you to say, shake it off. Shake it off in Jesus' name. Shake off that snake that bit your hand. Shake off those things in your life that are trying to take you out. Come on. There is freedom. There is freedom. We have encounters that happen twice a year. Twice a year, we have an encounter. When you get to encounter, you will not leave the same. You will, I've been to many, and I went to this one, and it was completely, it, it changed my life. It saved my marriage. It saved my family. It saved me. So encounter is coming up in August and you have to go. You're going to learn how to war. You're going to learn how to war. We have them in Arizona. We have them in San Antonio. I would say, come visit me in San Antonio. If you're in Arizona, come on. But listen, you got to shake it off. You're not meant to sit still. The, you, you don't let the enemy disarm you. You don't let the enemy disarm you. Uh, you take that elbow, you drop it on the enemy, you kick him out, you twist your, 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 your heel on his neck. Come on. He has no power over you. He's a coward. He's a coward, but he knows the words that can, that can take us out. The same power, the same power. Come on. That's it. That's it. It's the same power in Jesus Christ. Jesus has that. It's the blood of Jesus, right? It will destroy the enemy. It will destroy the enemy. You got to shake it off. Paul, after all, he went through. When everyone saw what happened, they said, well, he might have escaped the sea, but he couldn't get away with it. The land God is the, um, the land God is coming after him, right? Religious voices. There's religious voices, superstition, false doctrines, not rooted in God's word will then start to come against you, right? There was a gal that used to come to the, the church and oh my gosh, she has so much. God wanted to use her, but then the enemy in one swift move, took this gal and started wrapping around false doctrine around her. Started wrapping around this, this python of false information, right? A fault of um, religious spirit, religious chains, right? And it, and rather than get her into God, you know, being letting God take her and move her to where she's supposed to be in her position or her purpose with Christ, she fell back. She fell back, right? And this is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to take you. There's, there's a place where God's going to take you away. 
from, or not, sorry, God, uh, the enemy's going to take you away from, from God's purpose. And there's a place where the, the enemy uses you to be like, oh, you're, see, you're, you're, they're not Christian enough for you. They're not, they're not Christian enough for you. And they, he gets the religious spirit involved and you start believing the religious spirit and everybody else is wrong and you're right. You don't need authority. You don't need to submit to authority. You don't need to have a covering over you. You're just going to just do it yourself. You're going to do it yourself. It's just you, right? Only I hear from God. Where does it say that? We're all children of God. Come on. Everyone here also has to be careful when they see um, this and others as well. Everyone has a story. Everyone has a past. We have a burden, right? We all carry burdens. Everyone has a cross to carry, right? The thing is you have to be careful to not elevate that challenge, the burden above the greatness of God. The burdens can't be bigger than your God. There's no such thing, right? It's like, oh Lord, but I've seen you do things, God, but I don't know about this. I don't know if you can do this, God. I don't know. There is nothing God can't do. It doesn't matter what, what court documents are put in your name but, uh, get against you. It doesn't matter what, what um, things are being said about you in the world. God, you, you give it to God and God will battle for you. God, we've seen God wipe out court documents. We've seen God um, save people that were in the pit. We've seen him do it over and over again. We've seen people healed of sicknesses, right? We've seen people healed of physical body ailment, like things like their limbs growing, things like that. You know, this is what God does, right? Nothing is too big for him. So we cannot let the small things in life get in front of what God does and who he is, right? He, we, we, we cannot let the enemy have any power. You're still here. Say, I'm still here in Jesus name. Even when the enemy tries to come bite my hand, when I'm trying to help him, right? You knew it was a snake when you, when you befriended that snake, come on. You knew it was a snake. God's been telling you to shut that door. He's going to shut that door for those people. You, you want to love on them. You want to cater to them. You want to be there for them, but they keep destroying you. They keep top being toxic with you, right? You got to shut that door. God's protecting you. That doesn't mean that you're better than them. Come on. It just means that, that they're not for you. They're not in your camp. Not everybody has access right to you, right? G the, Jesus, we talked about this, the boundaries, right? Jesus had his 12 disciples, but yet in that 12, only three of them had full access to him right? Only three was able to sit there and, and hear God say how, how overwhelmed he was and how, how, you know, he's, he's, he, he's going to face this, 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 this cross that he was going to bear. Right. And he didn't take the 12, you know, why God didn't take the 12 disciples because Judas was in that 12. Come on. There's a snake. You got to shake it off, but not everybody has access to you. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So nothing happened to Paul after he was bitten. He didn't die. <laughs> so look at each other on your on your social media right here or on this on this picture right here just look at somebody on that screen and say you're still here right you're still here daniela right you're still here nichelle you're still here les right you are here god is using you he chose you he called you right so the people changed their mind about paul and they knew there was something different about him they knew they had that he had something they wanted because he shook it off Look at, look at each other again and say, shake it off. If you're at your house, look at somebody in your house and say, sh say, shake it off. Tell yourself, shake it off. Come on, shake it off. People listen to what you say through your pain. And then they see how you deal with it through the pain. They are always watching. People are always watching what you're going to do next. So now he goes to the house of Publius and he gets healed. I'm oh, sorry, and Publius gets healed. Then all the sick came and they got healed. So they said all these things about Paul. They said he was this, that, that he was that. And then he, he doesn't get bit. He doesn't get hurt by the snake. And then not, now they're saying, oh, you're a God, right? Then he goes and he goes to this place and he starts, he, he, he uh, prays, he prays over this Publius guy and this guy gets healed. And everybody starts saying, oh my gosh, he's, he's healing them. And Jesus, right? He, he's, he's doing the healing and all these people that are sick, they came and they're coming and they're, they're like, oh, he's going to heal them too, right? So your shipwreck that you're experiencing, your disaster, your transition was meant to kill you when God is setting things up to you, to use you to heal the very land you are in. Right. God is going to use you in the, in the area that you're in right now to use your voice, to use your hands, to use your hands and feet. Right. To be the um, the healer, the 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 um, the voice for the people that need it. Right. That's what you call revival. That's what revival is, is, be, is being revived. Revived is going from a lukewarm place of like, uh, do I believe I have a little bit of doubt? Do I to being on fire? To be on fire that no matter what comes out of that fire the enemy tries to come and attack me through this fire it's, it's going to get destroyed 
He's not going to take me out. Right? Thank you, Jesus. And Malta, the place he landed means flowing with milk and honey. That's what Malta means. He landed in, the, in this place. It means a place flowing with milk and honey. So don't ever despise where you're at in your life. Do you think that things happen by coincidence? Do you think that things happen by coincidence, right? Come on. Look at God's uh, creation. Look at what he did, right? Look at what he did. He created. He's the creator. It's not coincidence. It didn't just happen out of an explosion in the air, right? Didn't it just happen? It didn't just come from, you know, oh, uh, we came from monkeys. Like, really? Then where's the monkeys at now? Why do we have monkeys right now, right? Come on. You got to know. You got to know that God is, he is the greatest orchestrator of all. He is the greatest planner of all. Come on. The storm, the shipwreck, the fire, and even the serpent had a purpose. Oh, come on. People focus on what they don't have what the obstacles are and God wants to show them and experience in life because the purpose is sometimes buried beneath the storm. Come on, who knows that, that, that your purpose is buried beneath that storm. God is like, I need you to stand up. I need you to stand up. I need you to get up. Don't fall back. Don't fall back. You're missing it. You're missing it. You're looking at the, you're focusing on the obstacles. You're focusing on the storm. You're focusing on the shipwreck. You're focusing on the fire. Come on, you're focusing on the serpent and God says, stand up, get up rise up shake it off let's go let's go stop looking at all the things around you if it was that easy everybody would do it right stop looking at those things and trust god why why is it it's it's not easy to have faith and, and have faith in somebody that is not here but yet we know he is because we see him in a, and we know that we that we see him we, he talks to us we hear him right have faith no matter what it looks like in your life god has a purpose if you can shake off the ridicule if you can shake off the abandonment, if you can shake off the pain, if you can shake off the betrayal, come on, if you can shake off the self-pity, come on in Jesus name, then you can awaken the purpose. What do you need to shake? I want you guys to type in that box right there. What do you need to shake off today? You got to shake off that bitterness. You got to shake off that shame. What is God telling you right now? Shake it off in Jesus name. Shake off the victim mentality. Everybody is at me. Everybody's coming for me. It's all, they're all after me, right? Shake off that that paycheck to paycheck mentality. Shake off that abandonment, that rejection. Come on in Jesus name. I want to see it. Shake off those things right now in Jesus name. Shake off that bitterness, that resentment, that unforgiveness. Come on. Shake off that religious spirit in Jesus name. Come on. There you go. Criticism. Shake off being, uh, being afraid. Shake off fear. Shake off criticism. Shake off the lack of mentality, right? The lack Rather than focusing on what we have and what God is going to do, we focus on, on the things that we don't have. Why them? How come they have it and I don't have it? Focus on Jesus, right? Shake off negativity. Come on. We got to get off the negativity. We got, we got to stop being so negative. Stop listening to the people that are being negative around you. Yes, there's people in church that are negative, but they go to church and they, they must be right, but they're, they're always negative. Shake off the negative. Don't let it come off on you. Don't let it rub off on you. You say, off of me now. Off of me now in Jesus' name. Come on. Let's go. Right? No jealousy in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. We shake off that spirit of jealousy right now in Jesus' name. Right now, it has no, no power over you. Come on. Shake off that rejection. It has no power over you. Come on. No self-doubt. No unbelief right now in Jesus' name. The battle isn't always to the gifted. It's to the wise, but, or to the wise, but it, is, it is to the committed. Let me say that again. The battle isn't always give to the to the gifted, to the wise, but it is to the committed, to the enduring, those that would stand and march. God is giving this package to you. You're like, why are, why are you testing me, God? Why are you making me go through these things, God? He's saying, why not you? Because I know you're going to stand up. You're not going to sit down and take it. You're going to stand up and shake it off. And I'm, I'm preaching that right now over all of you ladies right now in Jesus' name, that you're going to stand up. You're going to shake it off right now in Jesus' name. You're not going to take it. You're not going to take it anymore. You're like, but I did yesterday. I did this morning. You're not taking it anymore. Today, you're putting your foot down. You're, you're speaking boldness. You're saying, get out. Get out spirit of fear. Get out rejection right now in Jesus' name. Get out. I'm going to rise up. I stand up because I know who I, who I talk to. I know who I listen to. I know who my father is. I know who's the one who, who, who leads me, who I listen to. Ecclesiastes 9.11, it says, we're wrapping up here in a second. It says, I have, been, I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned, but time and chance happen to them all. 
Come on. That was Ecclesians, uh, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes 9-11. So committed to the call, committed to the mission, the commission. Come on. Endurance to finish the race. Some people only go so far because they are still at the shipwreck of the uh, or the snake bite. They're still sitting in that that shipwreck. They cannot get out of the boat. They cannot get off get off the land. They're still sitting with the snake on their hand and saying, "Oh, you bit me. I'm going to sit here and stare at you bite me." They can't let that go, so they have not moved forward. Right? Some of us are still sitting in that place, so we let things in the past have authority over us, and 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 we agree and give them power. When you let things in your past give you uh, have power over you, you have partnered with it, right? You're like, well, that's how I was. Um, I guess I'm always going to be that way. I guess I'll, everybody will just walk all over me, right? That's not what God said, right? That's not who you are. Because when you accept Jesus Christ, you're a whole new creation. You have a new mindset. You're not a victim anymore. You're not a shy, timid little girl anymore. You are a lioness rising up and you're learning. You are learning, ladies. This is a learning thing. We're always a student. Come on, come on. Because of past trauma and pain, we let the enemy hold us stuck in that place in time. But if you understand that you will not agree with it and align with his lies, you will overcome. Gwen? Can I get Gwen and Christina? Can you guys please pray? Let's pray us out. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we come to you today. Thank you so much for this Bible study today. We pray and we ask, Father God, that our sisters today, they took something from this lesson today, Father God, and they shake off anything that is tying them down, that has them uh, burdens, that have burdens and worries in them, Father God, that we shake off the controlling, we shake off anything that is trying to divide us from you, Father God, from your word, Father God. We ask that we shake off and that we leave it at the foot of the cross, Father God, anything that that is hindering us, Lord Jesus, that is hindering our walk with you, that is hindering us from learning your word, from hearing your voice, Father God, we we shake off the confusion, Father God, that the enemy is trying to set in our minds, Father God, for us to be confused with your word, Lord Jesus. I ask, Father God, that all our sisters get prayed up, Father God, and all our sisters are armored up, Lord Jesus, that we put on the armor of God every morning before we step out of our beds, Father God, for the protection, Lord Jesus, for our families, for our minds, and for our hearts, Lord Jesus. Thank you for giving Pastor Stella the words for us today. Thank you for guiding her, Lord Jesus. And we pray that you continue to, to speak through all of our uh, teachers, through, through our Bible studies, Father God, all of our sisters that hold a Bible study. Lord Jesus, we ask that you continue to bless them and give them the wisdom and give them the words for our studies. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. We all pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this message today. Thank you for Pastor Stella bringing the fire of your word today, Lord. Thank you for every woman on this call, every woman that's going to watch this on YouTube. We're praying with you as you're watching it. Thank you for every opportunity that you've given us today, Lord, to see the things that are trying to come against us. Thank you for bringing it to our attention, to our eyes, so that we can remove it from our heart and our lives. Thank you for every... Um, woman here, Lord, that anything that they wanted to shake off and get off of them, Lord, that it's gone now in Jesus name, that we stand firm with them, Lord, we stand firm with them and they know that they have all the authority, all the boldness of their life and take control in the things that they do for you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. Thank you for all of these women. Please cover them as they go about their day, as they go about their week, Lord. Bring them daily reminders. Anything that tries to set in, that tries to come against them, we come against it now. Bring them those reminders of every day needing to get it. Shake it off. Do not let it bring them down. They are worthy. They are loved. They are so, so, so beautiful in your name. It's in your holy, holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to go into discussion here in a second. So don't jump off this. The discussion is so, so good. But I just want to quickly um, encourage anybody if you've never, oh, Jesus is so good. Thank you, Lord. If you've never received Jesus to live in your heart and you want to receive him today, all you got to just do is raise your hand and say, hey, 
I've never had God live in me. All his, all that is saying is that, Lord, I, I believe that you are who you say you are. God, that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me, to set me free, to take every sin for me, God, because I know that I fall short. All of us do. None of us are perfect. We all fall short. If you hear, you're going to, if you go to encounter, I'm going to believe that when you go to encounter, you're going to hear testimonies and they're going to blow you away. And you're going to say, wow, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. We've all fall short, but God is here to save us and set us free. He is here to set the captives free. And if you want to be set free today and you believe that he died for you, then you just say, um, just raise your hand or put an emoji or comment in the box. And we're going to pray for you. <clears throat> it's for those who are watching online as well. If you already knew Jesus, you already accepted him into your heart, then maybe you've been just been um, wandering off. We all wander. God, this is the story of the prodigal son. He's like, he he wandered, but when he, when he wanted to come back to his father, God opened, or he opened his arms wide open and said, come back. I love you. I welcome you. God's not mad that you left. He's so rejoicing that you want to come back. We can all wander. We can all tend to go off and do start doing things on our own and forget that he's in control and it's okay. He's not mad at you. So if that's you and you just want to rededicate, that's what that is. Just rededicate and we're going to pray. So if you, that's you, if you want to just raise your hand or comment or put an emoji, comment on the, on the um, YouTube channel. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're going to pray. <clears throat> So Lord God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for those, Lord, who are, who have accepted you into their heart today, God, who accepted you to live in them, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we know that we're a sinner. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. Thank you, Father. And I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart, to be my Lord, to be my Savior, to please forgive me of all my sins so that I can live for you every day of my life. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray for all of those, Lord, who, um, <clears throat> who have wandered. Lord, I pray right now, God, that, you, that they are rededicating. Lord, I know that heaven is rejoicing, God, for every salvation, every rededication. God, there is a party in heaven that is so happy for their souls. So I thank you, Jesus, Lord, that they are coming back to you, Lord. I thank you, God, for the, the invitation, well, Lord, always. The invitation that you give us, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for taking us back, Lord, when we, when we wander. We love you, Jesus. And it's in your mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 So bear with me one moment. I'm just going to turn off the recording. Don't jump off just yet. Say goodbye to our YouTube friends. God bless you.